We are live. Hello, everyone, in Fight for Zero. We are live on Fight for Zero YouTube, Fight for Zero's like page, and Fight for Zero's group called Fight for Zero Brevard because um, a lot of our conversation is going to be talking tonight about a sewage spill that occurred in the city of Titusville a few years back. So um, if you guys can, please let us know if you can hear us. I'm using a new mic. Uh, to try to block out some background noise that's in the room. And uh, I have Elizabeth here. If you guys don't recognize her, she's been in the thick of it with all of us uh, on location, helping us with all kinds of things, right? You've been in, uh, in the field helping us collect water samples for research studies. You've been in the field helping us report distressed manatees uh, for over a year now. That started back in about December of 2020 when we got involved with that. And uh, she's been on the boat with us. So Elizabeth, you've been in the thick and thin of it. It's insane uh, the amount of work that's gone into this, but we're so grateful for your help and your continued volunteer work, just so you know. And <laughs> I'm super grateful to be able to do it and have an organization that I can volunteer with and feel good about. It's awesome. So we wanted to get on here and we, so we're going to be doing a lot more lives. So if you guys see us popping in, we're, we're scheduling lives, we're having more conversations and we're really excited about it because we feel that we need to bring you guys into the conversation. And so if any of you guys, um, feel within this conversation, it's something that you know a lot about the subject. Um, I have a private link that I can drop to you to sign on with us to have these conversations. We want to invite you guys um, on the live stream to talk more about some of the subjects that we're going through. And today we're going to talk about the hidden dangers of Florida's waterways and tourism because we feel that both go together. And we wanted to start off with the subject of sewage spills. So what, what do you Yay. want to start off with on sewage <laughs> spills? We just want to have this conversation like, you know, casually and, and not really just 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 with the flow. Right. So. Right. Right. So the very first thing that comes to mind when I think of sewage spills is unfortunately Titusville, Florida. Um, it's seeing, sorry, about that. <laughs> sorry. Um, seeing firsthand from spill and fast forward a year later to where we stand now um, and, and really watching the progression of that and how, um, how it was handled, really, and, and the, the information that went to the public, I think it's really, really important important, and I can't stress that enough, um, for people to know. Um, and so there are ways for us to know some information, but it's not always reported properly. So I think that that is, that's definitely part of that discussion there. Let's start off with, I just want it to be very, very clear that water is not safe after several sewage spills or even after a sewage spill. You should not be swimming in any body of water that just had a sewage spill. And we can get into that conversation a little bit more, but this is a message that needs to be repeated throughout communities across the state of Florida. You should not be swimming in waterways that just had a sewage spill. And there's numerous reasons for that. Um, you could get really, really sick. You could get staph infection. There's uh, pneumonia. pneumonia. There's yes. eye infections. There's uh, headaches that you can get from, from the sewage. And there's also uh, cyanobacteria that can form because it's feeding harmful algae. Um, I do want to go back to what happened in the city of Titusville in late 2020. It was right around Christmas. I'll never forget it. Um, I don't know if you were around the Christmas time, but yeah, you sure know, was. yeah, yep. there's, there's a, an event that's held at Sandpoint Park. That's a park in the city of Titusville every year around Christmas. And 
um, it's it's a really cool Christmas event, actually. Yeah, it uh, really is. They do a good job with yeah, it. They do. Uh, my, my kids, actually, the, our favorite thing to do is we go and we drink hot chocolate. We always go there and get hot chocolate and we just walk around and we play the game of where uh, each year it's a little different, but we have to find um, the elf. There's like so many hidden elves uh, throughout the <laughs> throughout the park. And so we go around and we that's like we drink our hot chocolate and we look for the elves. We did not even walk into that park in late 2020 because the sewage stench was so bad. Um, I'm shocked at the amount of people that were able to endure the stench and still attend that event. And I'm also shocked that the city and event organizers didn't consider moving that event to a further location from where the sewage spill was happening. It was literally on top of where the sewage spill was. Um, literally at the same park. Yeah. Like, and, and next yeah, to the, was, the area yeah. where the sewage had spilled and come out of. And um, somebody said, I, I just got to stop. Why would you want to swim in poop water? <laughs> that, that is That's a really good question. That's I, a really good actually, question. Actually, that is a good question because <laughs> a lot of times I don't think a lot of people. That's why we added tourists into this conversation because there is a lack of information from our government agencies and it's very frustrating that we're not telling tourists what is going on when there's a massive sewage spill into the waterways we need to be communicating that not just to the local community but also to the tourists who are coming to our beautiful area to enjoy it because we're risking their health and safety by them swimming in it i've walked along parish park where a lot of people from orlando and tourists go and i've asked them you know around the time the sewage spilled do you guys know that there was just a sewage spill i can tell you no one no knew. one knew no one knew and, and no and one knew thing um there i don't know what that little park there is called where everybody uh, when you go over the bridge right there on the water where everybody kind of goes and paddle boards and um you know yeah. even after it took some prodding, but even after a notice was put up, um, the notice was very small. It was on a sign. It wasn't in a very um, visible spot. It was it was literally on like an eight and a half by 11 normal sheet of paper um, on this huge sign that nobody saw. So when I walked out there after the sewage spill and we, we definitely knew that there was the presence of cyanobacteria in the water, um, I was horrified. There were people playing with their families, with their dogs, children playing in that water. And I, I, you know, I'm trying to tell them, hey, you guys, this water isn't, this is, it's not safe here for you. There's a sign over here. And, you know, they're looking at me like I'm a crazy woman. And, and I'm like, but, yeah, but, you know, you don't understand. Your children are literally playing in fecal matter. And, you know, it was like they had no idea what I was talking about. And that is tragic. That is really tragic. And I wonder how many people actually did get sick from playing in that water, but they didn't know that that was what caused their pneumonia, their pink eye, their, you know, skin infection, their rash or, or you know, how many people were just diagnosed with or brushed off with, oh, it's river rash. I've heard that term several times. And, you know, those those kinds of things are not normal. You shouldn't get in water and come out with an infection. <laughs> like, well, and it's interesting. This is a great way to bring up some news articles I wanted to show you guys, like this one where it says, woman who says she contracted MRSA in Lauderdale River warns others of unsafe water. These kinds of news stories are really important. A lot of people don't go to the media and they're not outspoken and um, they're scared of the criticism that they're going to get from their communities and just from the general public when they come forward with these concerns because they aren't scientists. These are just normal people putting two and two together that are like, I was in the river and suddenly I've got MRSA. 
And when that sewage spill happened in Titusville, there were numerous people that came forward to fight for zero to tell us we're, we had to go to Parish Hospital to get treated for MRSA. There, there wasn't just one, there wasn't just two, there was numerous people that were dealing with symptoms after that sewage spill, and it should be taken seriously. Here's another one. It says, worrisome resistant bacteria found in Florida sewage. Researchers in Florida have detected the presence of antibiotic resistant bacteria in samples from water and sediment. So this is not only an issue in the water, but when sewage spills, it also is in the the sand after a 2014 sewer line spill. And here's another interesting USF study sewage spills breed superbugs that could undermine last resort antibiotic. And that is actually by Jim Waymer of Florida Today, who has covered a lot of environmental stories here in Bavard County. Um, I do see that we have Jennifer, Addison, and Jessica online with us. And if you guys feel like you want to hop on the live, let me know. I'll send you a private link to where you can come on and uh, have a conversation with us. Um, So let's let's talk about this spill really quick because we're going to get through that. Um, And how it was handled. And how how that was handled. I mean, that, there, there's that. It was a nightmare. We knew that something was wrong. I mean, just looking at the water, it was turning green. It was getting murkier and murkier. And, and eventually it ended up being just this chartreuse green color river wide. I don't know if you all remember how green the river was, but especially up in that Titusville area. It was just, it was about as green as your shirt. Oh, um, <laughs> like, pea soup green. It was out of line. That's so we the theme. knew that something was going on and we kept telling people, it's got to be, we've got to be testing for stuff. We need to know what's going on here. What is happening? Because, you know, clearly that 7.3 million gallons of human waste it, it was um, more. didn't have it, a positive impact. No, right. no, <laughs> it did not. Um, Let, let's show them a picture of where this happened. So if you're from Brevard County and you've been through Titusville, this is where Sandpoint Park is. This is taking a photo from US-1. And this is where the, the, the pipe had burst. And this is where they were fixing it. it and it's in the right next to US-1. But if you look at where those buildings are in the background of this image, that is uh, the direction of where the Indian River Lagoon is. You'll see that there's a yellow barrier that's trying to stop any kind of pollution from passing that barrier. Um, But here is an image in late December after this happened of just fish. Uh, They were lining the entire park all around these ponds Um, all the way down to where the lagoon was. It was just, if anybody was there, I'm sure that you could speak on how much uh, fish were lining and just gone from this. Now, I wasn't involved in the specific testing of that water, so I'm not real sure how we ended up getting you know, to the health department posting. And yeah, we're getting there. I have know. it and I have it. I okay. have it. All right. Um, I want to show them how small these signs were. And these signs were put up after our, um, there were certain community members. One of them, his name is Stan. He's really well known in the city of Titusville for, he's, a, a, you know, he's always advocating. He's at every single city council meeting. Um, he's always speaking on every agenda item. And he put up these big signs called ponds are hazardous waste and went into this long breakdown of why it was not safe. And um, that really helped push for the city to put these little signs, as you can see, they posted them around the park, but they left the park open. And um, so that was interesting. And here is one of the ponds being aerated and you can see, do you see the color of that fountain? I, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. This and this is green, vibrant green. And this is when we when we started seeing just how green and like we were being told the health impacts. We were like, we need to do testing to see if there's harmful algae in this water. And I'm not talking. I'm talking cyanobacteria. We're talking something that is linked to health issues. Um, and it's, it's, 
it's really dangerous. You guys need to research and look into cyanobacteria if you're not aware of what that is. And this amount of sewage can easily feed harmful algae. They say that none of it got to the Indian River Lagoon. And I can tell you right now, I do not believe them. And I'll tell you why. Do you see this pipe? This is a pipe that connects to all of those ponds. We did numerous lives back when this happened. And we followed the ponds on live to share with you guys how it got directly out into the Indian River Lagoon. We followed them. We showed you how all the it was connected, how it went under the road, and then how it eventually ended up right here where you see that green, you see that green water? It is going directly out to the lagoon, which is to the left of you in this image. Um, let there's, me a, there's like a series of parks and uh, of ponds in the park. Um, and they all kind of interconnect. And then there is a pipe that comes from like the last pond to where the river is. It goes kind of under the road. You've got a ditch area. So when the ponds get really full, that water really overflows in directly into the river. Um, there's no way that something in that river did not get in or something in the ponds did not get into the river. Um, I've walked that area. I don't know how many times there. I mean, there's just no there's no disguising it. There's no there's no doubt that what was there was going directly into the river. I mean, you, you can't deny it. Somebody said, I stopped and took a photo of you got of the guy's sign talking about stand sign and quickly a city employee came and removed it. Wow. Um, yeah, they, they, that was a constant issue. He would put them up and they would come out and take them right down. And then that's when they decide we're going to do our own signs. And um, they put their little Titusville emblem on them. And it, it's uh, I have a close up, I think, of the sign. If I can look in here and share with you guys. I don't think I uploaded it, actually. That's okay. I can upload it so I can give you guys an idea of what this sign said that the city of Titusville put up. Um, if I can find it, I don't think I have it in here. Live stream. Because I had a photo. Here it is. We'll upload this so they can see um, what it said up close. So this was the city of Titusville sign and it said, notice this area is closed for all swimming boating and fishing until further notice. However, I will tell you guys, people were still fishing and swimming and boating in it. There was uh, these signs. Uh, yeah, they definitely were. Yeah, they never stopped. No. People never stopped no. getting in that water. And it said recent contamination as a result of a sanitary sewer force main break may have made this area unsafe to use. Please contact the city of Tysville Water Resources Department, and they gave the number. Um, and, and I will say that those signs, they were posted everywhere. I think they got the message clear. It's sad that it takes residents and communities yep. um, saying, listen, you guys need to warn people and tell them that there's poop in the area. This is ridiculous. And, um, you know, they, that's that's what it takes is, is civic engagement for people to come in and really make us think about it. We shouldn't have to. It should be common sense for city officials to come forward and be like, listen, this is not good. Let's 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 put some signs up. Right, I would right, love for right, them to be right, proactive right, and do it on their own. Public health and safety to be the absolute yes. number one thing. Um, I, you know, because I really, I mean, I'm not directly pointing fingers at anybody specifically or anything, but yeah, you know, it like I, I know that we don't want to hurt tourism. I, I, you know, of course not. Of course, we don't want to do that. But we are living in a state with literally the most polluted waterways, like here we are. And it's really important. I, you know, the, the citizens that live here, um, they deserve better and our tourists deserve better. You know, they're wherever they are up North in parts of the country and all over the world. Really. We have tourists from, from all over the world come here that they want to come. They want to go out to the national wildlife refuge. They want to, you know, they want to go see all the sites. They yeah. want to take part in that gateway to space and nature. I was going to say you know, that. <laughs> they, they, they've heard all these great things and, and, but they don't realize that when something like this happens, they don't even know it happened. They have absolutely no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, tourists at that period of time might've looked at that green water and thought, wow, 
look at that green yeah. water. That must be normal. And look at all those people playing in it. So I'm going to take my family and play in it. So, I mean, I truly wonder like how many tourists were here during that period of time. I think a lot. And had like some sort of exposure and had some sort of symptom, but maybe they didn't even realize that they were sick from the water because, you know, the, the, the aerators that they put in the ponds and they turned on that made all of that go airborne. And that's what it does is, you know, puts oxygen in the water, it puts water in the air. So, you know, people are breathing this stuff and it does these kinds of, of, of viruses and bacteria and the things that come out of human waste. I mean, we all know it's nasty, but to really think about it, you know, pneumonia, bronchitis, croup, norovirus, E. coli, like all of these things, like people don't realize how important it really is. And, you know, something as simple as a little nick from shaving your legs and you go and swim in this water, you literally could lose your leg. Like, and that's, those are, those are things that are happening that I, I don't think that they get enough attention mm -mm. at all. Yeah, there's the... This is the canal that connects to all those ponds. And if you look in the background, that's where the lagoon is. And, um, you know, they tried to block off the pipe that goes underneath that road that goes to this. And there's the pipe that it goes to. This is just an immense amount of sludge that we uh, ended up sampling in. And we talk about sampling in it because we came back. Um, th th this is what the water looked like, guys, right here. It literally looked like sewage. It looked it horrible. Like traumatic seeing that again. <laughs> and, and, and this is our samples that we took to look for cyanobacteria and for them to analyze for harmful bacteria. Uh, and then because we did this, it took a lot of emails and communication and, and honestly, quite honestly, fighting well, and this the, the Department of Health. This is the Department of Health's little tiny sign. Yeah, this is the sign that I was talking about. That said, caution, blue, green algae may be in these waters. There may be toxins. And can you believe that this sign was like this big and it was hidden? And so you had, and this was at Parish Park, you had a ton of families swimming in it. Their kids were swimming in it. They Cowboy had no idea. And they had their dogs out there, which cyanobacteria can be really, really specifically toxic to dogs. Do yeah, dogs yeah, will just, yeah, yeah, yeah they will just, just done. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then we were there with signs and we started walking up and down saying, did you see this sign? Did you see that sign? And every single person was like, they had no idea what we were talking about. They didn't see the sign. We tried to educate on I cyanobacteria, know. harmful bacteria, the impacts of that and their kids swimming in it. And they were just like, I know that that day, <laughs> no less than five people said to me, they would have told us. They. Who's they? And I was like, they did. It's on that <laughs> sign over there. It's yeah. this big. You didn't see it when you came in. Oh, no, no, no. They would have shut this whole area down. No, they didn't. They, they let your children, your pets, your family members swim in water polluted with human waste. And, you know, I, I don't I don't understand why every every official that had anything to do with the governance or health and safety of our community wasn't out there with their own signs. I don't understand why they weren't out there telling every single family if they couldn't shut that area down and, and, and block it off. then somebody should have been out there telling people, letting people know, handing out flyers, doing whatever it took to educate people so that they didn't expose themselves to that kind of danger. Um, it can, people can die from things like this. And especially people that are compromised. Oh um, yeah. Immunocompromised, oh uh, the elderly, and then even our kids are at risk for yeah. these types of issues. And so, well, and I think a lot of people go to that specific park and that specific part of the river because it's 
easy access into the water. It's shallow. People can get in, in, you know, easier with their kids. It's a great, it's a beautiful place with a beautiful view, you know, and there's a lot of it. People are attracted to that place. And it's, it is, it's kind of a safe place to take your kids. Um, so I, I, I just don't understand the lack of the lack of transparency, the lack of communication with the public. So you do talk about the communities and civic engagement like you just kind of briefly mentioned that. And I just want to show you guys these awesome people in the city of Titusville, the city of Titusville. I've said this over and over again. I've told city council this. You are lucky because I have seen so many amazing advocates in the city of Titusville that are fighting for the environment and fighting for the lagoon. And um, I I don't see this in many of the cities throughout of our county yeah, where- These people are truly our best oh, resource. Oh yeah, they they, really there's at least 20, if not more, that are very active. They are uh, very involved. And these are the type of people that we need the ones that will show up when it counts that will use their voice that'll send emails and i just want to highlight this because they played a big part in getting those signs up and bringing awareness to this issue and telling them that this is unacceptable here here's a city council meeting with laura lee she's a well-known advocate in the city of ticeville and in bavard county um, and, and she gets these big pictures blown up to, and it really made a point. You yeah, see how green of that water, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, this is what it takes now, Addison. Um, I see your comment. I sent you a Facebook message with a private link to hop on. Let me bring this up really quick. Florida right to clean water.org print it, sign it and mail it today. If you guys haven't signed that or looked into that, please do. It's it's go to the website. Um, you have to print it and sign it. You can't, it's not an online, uh, what do you call it? Like a change.org or a petition. Right, like right, go, yeah. print it, sign this it, is a it legit yep. one. You have to, the, the legit ones are the ones you have to print, sign and actually send in the mail. Um, that could be a conversation for a different live. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole different conversation, but I do believe we have a right to clean water. We should I, have a legal right to clean water. So, I, you know, I think that, you know, back to the kind of the tourism side yeah, of Somebody this. brought tourism bucks over health and safety. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the tourism part of this is, I, you know, we, I, there's a lot of transplants here. A lot of people, I'm originally from Ohio. Um, I've been here for over 20 years. My family's been here for a long time. And you know, there are so many things about Florida that as somebody from somewhere else, we, you don't really know. Um, I remember being surprised when I learned that there were bull sharks in the river. I didn't, I didn't know that. And I was probably 20 years old before I realized that I just never had, had really thought about it. But I think a lot of people don't know those kinds of things. They don't know the dangers that are in the water. Um, a lot of people come here and they don't realize that if there's water, there can be an alligator. Like they don't understand that. So not <laughs> only true. are a lot of our tourists coming in here and they, they just generally don't know the area. They don't, they don't really understand that even some of our plants want to eat you um <laughs> they i i think that with this kind of thing they are especially vulnerable because not only do they not have the general knowledge they aren't going to have the local knowledge like a lot of people here have uh, signed up for local alerts you'll get like um, pollution notices and that kind of thing. And some of the public service announcements. And of course, I mean, I don't, I don't go out of town and sign up for their emergency notice system. You know, no. I don't think anybody ever does that. So these people are, are especially vulnerable. And I think that's why we're seeing so many stories in the news of people coming here and, and, uh, you know, getting MRSA, getting a flesh eating bacteria, like uh, those kinds of things happen a lot. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't really pay attention to them. We and don't really pay attention. I mean, the Floridians kind of laugh at it. Yeah, they point, do. You know, the Flor and... Floridian. Uh, Flor uh -huh. Yeah. So, so <laughs> like, okay. So, 
you know, with sewage, you have a lot of issues. You have a lot of harmful things that happen after a sewage spill. But then you also have bacteria that is naturally occurring in the warm waters. And like I was telling her, I was taking samples. Was it January? I don't remember when it was. It was like in the cooler months. And I had fell and I scraped my leg. Yep. And I immediately panicked. But then I remembered, I called Jeff, which is, you know, the vice president of Fight for Zero. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to go to the hospital. I'm going to get flesh eating bacteria. I was like, you know, I, I was like, I literally just ripped open my entire calf. It was bad. There was blood everywhere. And my kids were like, oh, my mom just, they were like, she just slipped in. Are you okay? Um, and he was like, oh, it's cold. It's colder. It's not the warm months. Thank goodness it's not the warm months. And he kind of brought me back. I'm like, oh you know, you're right. It's not the hot months. It's really cool outside. And I was really lucky, but guys, so many people don't realize that they should not be staying in these warm waters with an open wound with, with, with a cut. Um, and it's not just warm water and the other people don't realize about our specific area here in the indian river lagoon is that the indian and banana river are both they are wind driven rivers so they really don't have their their own current so to speak um when the wind moves the water moves so that's I, it is kind of stagnant water. And so these kinds of things can happen in this warm brackish lagoon and people don't seem, a lot of people don't just don't realize it. You look at the, the span of these rivers, they're wide and, and, and you think that what you're seeing is a, a current, but it, it, what you're really seeing is the wind moving that water. So the, the water underneath stays pretty stagnant. Things don't move the way they do in other rivers I, I can't say normal rivers <laughs> they're, they're all normal rivers but well, it's a you lagoon. Know, what we're what a lot of people are used to it is a lagoon it's, it's a lagoon it's, it's, yeah, it's not exactly, a river exactly and so, so i think um it, it is important for people to remember share information and learn how to protect yourself from things, mm -hmm. which is, I think that that's a, a really important part of this conversation. Not only um, it, physically, as far as if you have a cut or an, an air exposed or that kind of thing, but preventative wise, you know, what are some things that you can do? I know uh, myself, I have gone and picked up a lot of trash in the area. And one of the things that I come across a lot is broken glass, um, a lot of mowed over trash on the side of the roads. And I can't tell you how many times I have pulled pieces of mowed over soda cans and that, that mangled metal right out of the shallow water and those kinds of things so you need to be very aware of where actually, you're stepping when you get into the water speaking um, of that yes <laughs> actually speaking of the trash there was somebody that just posted this past week uh i don't know if it was a visitor it was a kid that got a hook a fishing hook at the beach completely embedded in their foot and they had to go to the hospital because it was really, really bad. So those please clean up your are, stuff. Yeah, please clean up your stuff. If you're fishing, try not to leave your lines and your hooks. If you're drinking, don't leave your beer cans on the sides of the road. Because what happens bottles. to the beer cans? Oh, the beer cans. What happens the beer to cans. it? The if it's on the cans, side. If they're on the side of the road, unfortunately, they're probably going to get mowed over. <laughs> um <laughs> I laugh I because no, I mean it's been a battle. I'm still not there yet. So if you are a lot I worker, laugh because you don't so... take it personally. I know that you guys out cutting everybody's lawns are not the ones running over the trash all the time. Oh, but we do have county state crews that I've watched. I can't deny it. I've watched it. I've seen it. And it, it is just, it, it's maddening to me, the amount of garbage that just gets run over. And that stuff is dangerous. I mean, that, that mangled metal, those broken, broken pieces of glass all over the place. Like, I, you know, it, it just, it is, it's just, don't run over, don't run over the trash guys. Um, <laughs> so, but it, 
and you know, being that we have so many miles of roadway in Brevard County that are directly on the water, you know, it's important for us as, as citizens, as visitors, as anybody that wants to get into those areas, especially, uh, you know, um, not just especially, but 528 is a really, really common place for people to go on the weekends and party and watch rocket launches and everything else. And, you know, I, I go across there all the time. I'm constantly picking up trash there. It's I, I stop there oftentimes um, and just about every day. I like to stop somewhere and look at our beautiful place, but I always end up picking up trash. So when you get into that water, if you get into that water, wear some water shoes, um, have, have some things with you where you can immediately take care of a wound. You mm -hmm. want to be able to wash that wound with soap and water, get it disinfected as quickly as possible. And obviously don't go back into the water with an open wound. Um, you want to check yourself too. You, uh, you know, you get a mosquito bite and you scratch it and you have a little scab, that kind of thing can very easily turn into an infection. And don't shave and then go right out there. Right. I right. mean, there's yeah. things yeah. that you guys can do to take precautions on these things because we don't want to ever say, don't enjoy yourself out in the water. That is too extreme in my opinion. I, I, I believe that it's really just as simple as education and talking with your neighbors and sharing these, these, this insight with them, right? Like we're trying to share with you what to look out for, how you can prevent it. There's simple things, like she said, wearing the water shoes, um, you know, well, and educate your families as yeah. well. I think most of us living here have family members that come and visit from time to time from out of state. I can tell you that my entire Ohio family is probably sick of hearing me say cyanobacteria, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they but know the word now. They definitely know what it is and mm -hmm. they definitely, you know, they're tired of hearing me talk about trash, but the, they know to what to look for when they are in an area that they could possibly end up being cut or harmed. So when they come here, you know, we don't necessarily go do all the normal things that anybody else would do because they are very, very aware of what is I, happening. I just like, I like <laughs> seeing people come here and enjoy what we have. And I especially, you know, really love the tourists coming here and being able to go home and say like, we love Florida. We love the sunsets, the sunrises, the water, just everything about the tropical vibes, but right? We want for people to come here. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, and I think there's the, there's how we end up kind of minimizing this message is because the, the powers that be are really afraid that we are going to hurt tourism. I don't believe that we're going to hurt tourism by being honest with people. Mm -mm. I and, 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 and I also think that, you know, if all of a sudden the entire state of Florida was not able to swim in those waters, then yeah, yeah, we should lose some tourism. You know point. what hurt We yeah. absolutely should because people's lives are way more important than bringing in any dollar amount. Um, I know they're the lifeblood of our communities. The tourists, you know, they feed us, they go to our restaurants, they fill up our hotels, they're at your, your private Airbnbs, uh, you know, but we need them to not only come here, but we need them to go home healthy and happy. So just recently, this 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 news came out, swimming prohibited at several beaches. I think this is on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And this is what I think needs to happen with signs and letting just educating. Yes. Do they have to stay off the beach for a day or two? Well, first of all, if we stopped the sources of pollution, we probably wouldn't have all these issues. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, we need to be transparent, not just with our locals, but with our tourists here that come here, because this is what is bad for tourism. I'll show you exactly what is bad for tourism. Yeah. Headlines like this 12 year old is walking again after contracting flesh eating bacteria during family vacation in florida that is what hurts tourism we, imagine if we were doing adequate testing and our florida department of health was actually educating and putting out serious warning signs to tourists to let them know simple things i'm not saying 
you know, like, let's go crazy and be like, don't go in the water. It's really unsafe. Don't. I'm saying exactly what she said. You might want to wear water shoes. Do not go into the water with an open wound. It's as simple as giving that information. And I think we would see this prevented. Now, they do say that this is a really rare thing. Um, but it's we'll get it. It's not rare enough that we don't know about it. Right. It's not rare enough that we haven't seen it in the news. It's not rare enough that we haven't seen it in the national news. I So, of course, it's it's rare, but we have, I can't even begin to think how many millions of people actually visit the state of Florida every year. I, 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 I did, that number has got to be just astronomical and you know, it is concerning. It, it's, it, it is very, very concerning. These people are coming here and they are, whether it's one person. And then, and, and that's the other thing too. One person matters. Mm -hmm. One person definitely matters. One family matters. So why not be transparent when something like this happens? Why not report these things immediately? Not, you know, we can get, um, you know, one person is pretty important when it's a, a silver alert or an amber alert. That's just one person, but we do it anyway. We do it anyway, because those things, if people's lives matter. So I don't know. I mean, Florida, I'd really like you to get it together. <laughs> I mean, and, and a lot of times it's very frustrating when they try to minimize it and dismiss it by saying, oh, it's a it's really rare. And it only it only happens to immunocompromised people. And I there's no words for that, because are you dismissing the fact that they matter? Well, and I, think, I mean, I, I think that the extremes are what is rare. But things like um, pink eye, mm. bronchitis, pneumonia, croup, those aren't rare. Those happen every day. So how many people in the state of Florida had one of those things and it just was, it wasn't necessarily misdiagnosed because they legit had bronchitis, but the source of where it came from, how did they end up there? They may not even know. They could have walked past a park that had a recent sewage spill that was aerating it. Could have happened. We don't know that, you know. And and so, you know, how many times are, are people just not aware that whatever their ailment is actually did come from some sort of in exposure to something? That I find that concerning. And I, you know, I think that you'll agree with me that the oh. medical community isn't really completely up to date on environmental exposures to things. So oftentimes, uh, you know, somebody's going to go to the doctor and say, hey, I have this thing on my arm. And the doctor's going to say, oh, yeah, here, just throw some antibiotics on it. It's no big deal. You just got this. And, you know, maybe they're not completely right. Doctors are just practicing. So, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it, I feel with the day and age we're in and the technology I mean, come on, we live on Florida's space coast. Yep. We could have technology to really help us combat these health issues. I mean, imagine if, if, if hospitals started seeing like, for instance, Parrish, you know, because it was the closest to that sewage bill. Right. If they saw 10 cases of MRSA happen within a few weeks time span, why is that not a red flag? You know, simple things like that. And I think that's where organizations like ours come in and why we're so important, because we're doing the work that our government agencies should be doing. And that's really frustrating, though, for us, because we're continuously feeling like we have to carry the burden of proof. And whether that's testing the water to say, look, it came back, harmful cyanobacteria. And sometimes they'll try to gaslight us and say, well, your test isn't good enough. And then we do even a better test and a more expensive test. And then there's another excuse. Um, this is what our government agencies should be doing, whether it's the Florida Department of Health, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. I think that they need to be stepping up for the health and safety of our communities and for the tourists that come here, we don't want a bad rep. I mean, when people leave here, you saw all those headlines. That's worse 
for tourism than being honest and having warnings up and, and, and educating people and letting them know there is a potential for harmful bacteria in the water. Do not go in with an open cut, you right. know, um, and wear your water shoes in, in the lagoon. Uh, there are so many different ways of, in this day and age that we could communicate that directly to people that come here. I mean, we, we can certainly get those messages out in our own communities, but we, you know, we, our state, our counties, they do business with some major, major, major players in tourism that, you know, they're the ones that, 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 really could help get that message yeah. out and there would be, there's no reason that that those kinds of things those kinds of partnerships in the interest of what is best health wise safety wise for our tourists for their guests for their patrons that you know there's no reason that we can't communicate those messages a absolutely not so i you know i think that it's it's unfortunate that we even have to have this conversation. Um, I think that we certainly need to be educating ourselves. Um, thinking about some of the symptoms of, of some of these things. I mean, nausea, vomiting, headaches, eye irritation, sore throats, those kinds of things, they absolutely can be linked to some sort of environmental exposure to, to something. Um, and with this kind of thing, sewage especially, those are some nasty infections that can happen. Nasty, nasty infections. And I, I you know, I don't want my family to go through that kind I of mean, thing. My dad did go through MRSA, I was gonna actually. Say, he uh, went through MRSA. It was not from environmental exposure. We know where it came from. But Let me ask you, would, him, you, would you put your leg after you took a dump inside your inside your toilet and then flush no no and any you know now after dad going through that like i'm paranoid about MRSA. like i that's terrifying to me after watching a loved one go through that the man was getting blood transfusions every six weeks i like it was awful it uh, was awful I, was that after the sewage spill? No, oh. it, and it wasn't I, from that. It wasn't from that. But MRSA is a, it's no joke. Um, no. You know, I, and, I, I had you a know. friend that went through it after they went, right. um, they went paddle boarding out in the lagoon after that sewage spill. And they were one of the people that went to perish because they got MRSA. Oh. Now, um, the difficult part is, and I understand this because a lot of people aren't, uh, you know, uh, vocal or open about their health stuff. Um, it sucks because the media was looking for people to come forward and talk about their experiences around that sewage bill. So if you guys did have any health impacts, I'm just going to put this out there that um, you might want to tell your story. And if you consider that, reach out to me. And I can try to connect you with a reporter that's been following this for years um, and, uh, you know, trying to kind of put together an investigative report regarding how it was handled and things like that. So, um, you so know, I don't think that there's a whole heck of a lot of people these days that really feel like they can trust their mm, government. I know. Um, which also is super unfortunate. But because of that we have to watch out for ourselves. We have to watch out for others. Um, we, time and time again, we've watched, you know, major, major corporations. We have watched our own federal government. We have watched our own state government um, hide things. I mean, there's no other way to put it. They, we, we know. And so with things like this, where they're so afraid to lose money, we don't want to hurt the tourism. We can't. Oh, no, no. Everything's fine here. It's uh, even more important for us to do, stay diligent, make sure that we know how to protect ourselves. Really, you know, I, I don't expect everybody by any means to become an expert on any symptoms or <laughs> all of the things that can happen, but just knowing that it is a possibility. So, you know, if your family does want to go out and go enjoy the water, um, take a look online, do a quick search. See I mean, if, if it, if it looks it, like this, right. Number. Yeah. Don't get in that water. If it looks like that. 
<laughs> if it looks like that, you probably shouldn't get in the water. If it looks like that yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you can smell and it's like your nose is is an indication that something's up. Mm -hmm. So if it looks like this, if it looks like this, if you're seeing green tints like this, don't get in the water, especially you guys, cyanobacteria, blue green algae is so harmful, um, not just to your health, but especially pets. And it, it's worrisome. And all it really takes is just education, not just educating, you know, our communities about these issues. Mm -hmm. Um, but well, also our bacteria, it's not just dangerous. It is a neurotoxin. It literally affects your neurological system. And there's just no level of emphasis that could be put on health and safety when there is presence of that kind of bacteria in the water. There's no level of, of emphasis that can be put on that. So if, if we can't rely on our governments to protect us our physical health, then we have to be able to do that on our own. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't, I don't think I'm alone in that in saying that I don't necessarily trust any level of government to protect my health. I, I do get you know? people surprised when I talk about like they'll see pictures of me in the lagoon, but I'm sampling a lot of the times when we're kayaking. You and I have kayaked. We've kayaked yeah. miles. Yeah, I fell in the water. Yeah, we, I thought we, I was we were out there because for, it got in my ear. We were out there for like six <laughs> hours one time. And I'll tell you, like, there's things that I look out for. Like, I will not get on the water with a cut. Um, people know this about me. Um, I usually wear my my river shoes if I go out in the in the lagoon, and um. If I see that it's green, I've learned a lot in the last few years regarding blue-green algae. Um, even though I've done tests and I've seen things not come back in that water test, I've gotten a little more paranoid about it because there's people in South Florida that have a lot of knowledge when it comes to blue-green algae. They have been through it. And uh, if I see that it's a vibrant pea soup green I probably won't go out there. And we've yeah. talked about this in our group before where we're like, have you guys been on the water today and gotten a really bad migraine or headache? You guys, a migraine and a headache is a sign. I mean, you, there are allergies, but there's a sign that you've been exposed to an environmental toxin. And if you watch the movie link that we put out over the weekend, you, all of those people that got sick, their first symptoms were headaches. Well, and it's, it can be, you know, it can be different for people too. Oh yeah. You know, some people be exposed to exactly the same thing at the same time. One person might get a headache, but another person might get a sore throat. So, you know, there's, there's, there are different things to look for. I mean, that, that's, and that's not saying every time you get a sore th throat, freak out and, <laughs> Blame exactly because you took a walk on near the river i mean that's just it, but that's why we're trying to come up with resources fight for zero mm -hmm. is trying to come up with resources we're trying to come up with um we do have a cancer and an autoimmune disease reporting form that we've been working on collecting data across the state of florida to help us identify hot spots and potential areas that we would we would investigate and we also are looking at creating tools to help report symptoms after sewage spills, for instance, big sewage spills or uh, just uh, pollution spills. Speaking of, you know what? We actually, um, I have it on here. Remember, we wanted to show them the map and we can end oh, with that. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, yes. I don't know where it went. <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I totally took. Oh, I think I just saw it. It blended in with all my other uh, craziness on here. I just saw it. Help my eyes. <laughs> I don't see it either. Okay, wait, 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 right here, right here. This is all work that I've been doing on the website. We're we're adding. So our website, um, we're adding a ton of stuff. So you may see that there's some tabs that say, "Hey, we're working on this." Uh, there's a lot that's about to be published. And we're really excited about it, but it's it's still um, it's taking a lot of time to put it together. Here we go. Let me put this up. So, in case you guys may or may not know, there is a site on the Florida Department of Environmental Protection that shares pollution notices, and this is just the last thirty days. 
in the state of Florida. This is the last 30 days. Hey, look at that space coast. So they, I mean, it's, it's all over the state, <laughs> right, you know right. what I'm saying? So that's why this is an important discussion yes. because I know um, there's just pollution issues across our state and it's really worrisome because we have a unique aquifer and just the way everything's set up in the state of Florida, our groundwater is easily contaminated. Um, but this is the pollution map and you guys, we check it. Sometimes we'll try to post into our group. And this is just the ones we know about. These are just the ones that are reported. You, you guys saw, so I download documents off these sites once every two weeks. And so I had found that the city of Titusville had uh, the DEP, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, caught them with sewage and, you know, that got out. So that wasn't put on this map. And it's interesting because they were on the next door yep. app. Yep. I say they. It was it was a mysterious account that was on the next door <laughs> a lot of those around yeah there's there? a lot <laughs> um and they were on there and they were talking about look at who's jumping on I'll, I'll get you in a minute addison um they were talking about oh that lady stell i was like okay yeah that lady Stel. so we love it we're right, like the lady right. stell we're gonna turn it into a, a shirt the lady stell <laughs> you know and <laughs> it's, it's true though hey lady uh, hey lady uh and and they were like they go if it was a sewage spill, why isn't it on the Florida Department of Environmental Protection's map and pollution site? And I said, hmm, that's a good that's question. A great question. And yeah. I went to the documents and sure enough, there it was. I'm like, you know, you guys love giving us information. It's great. We're going to add Addison on here, uh, you know, for, for the ending of our discussion. Let's Yay. do that. Hi, Addison. Hello. Hi. There. Hi. <laughs> I miss you. I haven't seen you. I know. Most of the time we go to the boat ramp, you're not there. All right. We're going to have to do something. <laughs> so what have you been up to, Addison? Um, well, most of the time um, we're picking up trash at the boat ramp. And uh, when we're... Girl. <laughs> you're stopping the source. When we're there, um, we normally see uh, the foam. Um, most of the time that we're there, we see that. And when was the last time we saw a dead man, a uh, manatee there at all? That's been a while. Yeah. You haven't seen any manatees down there? No. no not even swimming ones? No. No. Yeah, they're probably all up at the Mosquito Lagoon. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, it's going to amp up here in a little bit because we're going to be heading into the winter season where they come and migrate to the power plant. So you'll probably start seeing them again. I'm very worried though. Yeah. That we're going to see the very same concerning. thing we saw. Addison was part of our team and helping us when we were monitoring the situation with the um, unusual mortality event with the manatees here in Brevard County, where we had the number one, um, <sighs> The number one amount of, of manatee deaths um, over the past year or so. So she's been a little trooper. I it was hard to it was hard to see you see that um, that that was not fun. But you hung in there and you helped us out a lot, and we're really grateful for that. So do you do you have any? Um, what would you what, what what would you say to your peers? um about the sewage and the pollution here local um well uh i don't <laughs> she's like that's a lot i put you on the spot addison <laughs> i don't even know where to start <laughs> i don't know where to start <laughs> so what would you tell your brother if you thought that he was getting into water that had high amounts of human poo in it oh i would tell him that um well there's a bunch of poop and uh there's a bunch of people um what do we say when we drive by the river and we see people in it we say um that's the poopy water <laughs> and um, hey, every single time we go past there and hayden sees the people in the water and if um, we have the window down, we have to whirl, um, roll it up because 
Hayden would say, get out of the water, people. It's poopy water. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Well, and that is fantastic because that tells me that you and your brother have an amazing mom <laughs> that has educated you guys. Hi, Jen. <laughs> has educated you guys and 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 helped you to be able to protect yourself as you go on and as you do want to go play because sometimes you want to just go play in the water yeah and so you know how to protect yourself from being exposed to something like that and that yeah. is i think that's probably the biggest gift that any mama could give her child yeah and that's swimming in the pool in our backyard <laughs> yeah, yeah all right i like it yeah <laughs> It's just so unfortunate. I have pretty close friends that they do eco tours and a lot of their their income is made on sharing the Indian River Lagoon with tourists. And that's it's that's just another reason why it's so important that we clean our water because yeah. we want them to enjoy it. And uh, the tourists don't know that there is a bunch of human. Yeah. Uh oh. Where'd you? Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is. There's a bunch. She said human waste. We should have been saying human waste instead of poop. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear oh, well. that Addison is <laughs> yeah. smarter than all of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just, you know. <laughs> it's pretty clear. She knows. She knows. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, the, the tourist... I think it is our responsibility to protect them. Yeah. I, I believe that if you're going to invite somebody into your home, it is your job to make sure that that home is safe and secure. So, yeah. I, you know, if we're going to ask them to come here and come and fill up our pockets with money with their tourism dollars, then it is our responsibility to let mm -hmm. them know that they, you know, they could be in a potentially dangerous situation and that yeah, there, there's no reason that we can't, that they're, that, our state that our counties can't work together and make sure that those messages get out to people. I mean, I'm not holding my breath, but it, I hope that eventually with enough activists, with enough people getting out there and engaging with their leaders, with their representatives, telling them how important it is for people to be able to protect themselves. We're not asking for anybody to do it for us. I just want to know the information so I can. And that mm -hmm. is, there's the important part of that. You've got to, we've got to empower people to be able to protect themselves and their families. And that's, I think that's the overall message over and over and over again. I have said this, I, we have all said this, is that give the people the power to do what they need to do for themselves. Yep. You know, we true. Yep, yep, we absolutely do. And we gotta work together. Absolutely. We have to work together. Mm -hmm. Educate the only way that we can stop this problem. Yep, yeah. it is. It really is. Yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. Um, somebody asked, does every state have this? Um uh, I'm I'm guessing they're talking about the map. I don't know. I, this is a Florida state. This is a Florida state thing. It's a Florida state map. I'm pretty sure that it came about because we had so many issues. Um, you could always check with your state environmental protection agency. Every state has that and see if they have something. And you know what you can do if they don't have it in your state? Show them Florida's. Use us as a role model and say, this is what we want for this state. You could go to your state representative and say, this is what I am proposing. We can't go to our state representative. <laughs> we can't go to our state representative. <laughs> well, <laughs> we can we we can try. We can continue to try. Yeah. We can continue to shout that message as much as we possibly can, <laughs> and we can as citizens. Addison, you know this better than anybody. I have watched you in action. You can educate the representatives on what is happening and why it's so important. Uh, you know, if they get a barrage of things, I can't and I think email them on anything. What's that, honey? Blocked on everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're blocked because of me. 
Ah, uh, well, it happens. <laughs> but you, you can, you can. We know that. You know, these people are just people. You know that as well as anybody else. That these, you know, no matter what seat they're in, whether they're governor, whether they're county commissioner, whether they're, you know, they are just people, and they are reachable. Um, it may be hard to get to them, but that's where persistence comes in. That's where the advocacy comes in. That's where this type of activism comes in. And groups like Fight for Zero come in is that we do engage with our representatives. We do show up to public meetings. We do show up and, and we do raise our voices at times. And sometimes that means standing out on the side of the road holding a sign. <laughs> Sometimes that means just educating your family members. Sometimes that and means that dressing up just, like a poop emoji, right? And <laughs> dancing around. Not that I know anybody that would do that. <laughs> um. <laughs> I would do that. I don't care. <laughs> or like a manatee dressing up right, like a manatee. Yeah, you know, I, and I think that's you know, advocacy, activism. <laughs> it. it it takes different forms for different people. And, you know, I know, I realize a lot of people can't go out there and, you know, march in the streets. I realize people work. I realize that a lot of times these public meetings are held at times that are very inconvenient for working families. So engage, engage, engage. You can, you can call your representatives. You can email them. You can send a lot of them tweets. You can engage with them on all forms of social media. So, you know, there's a lot of things that people can do to change laws, to change protocols, to change the, the standard for how we deal with things like a sewage spill on a large scale. Like, we can. We absolutely can do it. There's been so many things in history that people were told they couldn't do, and they can and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Addison also, I wanted to point out that you you helped a lot uh, on the right to clean water. Somebody brought that up. Let me put up there. Um, Amazing job. Amazing job. So they were bringing up the website, uh, asking people to go visit it, print it, sign it, and mail it today. But <laughs> she is out there getting that petition signed. You're doing such a great I've job. Got, like, uh, almost, almost, 100. almost 140 petitions. Wow. Florida. Wow. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. I know a you know, the second you got those petitions, you were rearing to go. You were like, I'm not giving you your Girl Scout cookies <laughs> until you sign them. That's, 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 that's you, oh, no. you bribed me. <laughs> no, it was it was it was a great exchange. Want your cookies? Send Can't it. wait for more cookies. I Can't actually. wait for more cookies. <laughs> January. All right. January is that what you said? Yeah. Let, Girl oh. Scouts rule. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Grow out there. You also got your uh, gold volunteer president award, right? Yep. Oh, your, really? This power. year you got that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. She is a trooper. Man, you're just on the go, go, go. I can't even imagine what you're going to look like in five years. You're so active. She's going to need an assistant. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'll work for you. <laughs> well, we've been on for a little over an hour, so yeah. I don't want to... Um, but this will be posted on YouTube, Fight for Zero's like page, and in Fight for Zero Brevard. I think that's where you guys saw it come up. So oh, well, um, I'll, I'll follow you on um, YouTube. Yeah, awesome. that would be awesome because Fight for we're going to start going live a lot more. We're going to be doing some in the field stuff here soon. Very excited. We've got our academic partners that we've just got a lot going on. So um, we want to kind of bring everybody in on it. Yeah, we're right. looking forward to doing it. Definitely. <laughs> If we're going to do any cleanups when the uh, big launch is happening. Yeah, I was actually, we'll talk about that later. I was actually considering like maybe trying to get a group together, go into a certain area and just, I'm really concerned because we we're already having trash issues and I'm sure right, you could speak right. on that all yeah. night because oh. Um, oh. We, we've seen where the trash cans are overflowing after just a weekend. Yep. And uh, yeah. we've had conversations with council members regarding it because it's just, 
I mean, yeah, it's, unfortunately, it seems a uh, Kirk Point Park there in Titusville, just um, right at 50. I don't know what is going on there, but, you know, they have a launch schedule. If we know there's a launch, it's probably a good idea to go out and pick up the trash immediately afterwards. But, you know, the trash cans are just overflowing. So I, I, I digress. We are <laughs> <laughs> we've gone for hours about that. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm sitting next to somebody who could also go on for hours about that. Oh, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, um, Addison, I'm going to get you off the live stream. You might still be sitting in the back room, which is fine. We're just going to get off here and we're going to end this. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us on this live stream. And, uh, you know, please, if you're if you're watching this on rewatch, comment below Get involved with the conversation and uh, we'll see you guys another time. Don't forget, we have a link to bring you on live if you want to join our conversation.